Hey, this is Professor John Twining from Eastern Nazarene College. I've decided to come out to a vernal pool with my son today. It's fall, the vernal pool is dried up, but we're looking for juvenile spotted salamanders and adult redback salamanders in uh, areas where the soil is moist and there are logs and rocks that they can use for cover. Uh, this is a time of year where they're preparing for winter and so we're hoping to catch a few before the first snowflakes fly. Okay, this is a redback salamander. It's one of the most numerous vertebrates in all of New England. You can find them just about under any rock or log in places uh, where the soil is moist. We were fortunate to uncover this one today under a small piece of wood. These are lungless salamanders. They breathe through their skin and um, they also lay their eggs on land. They're a terrestrial salamander. They are not uh, breeders in vernal pools, but we can find them around vernal pools in the moist soils under logs and rocks. There's two color phases, uh, sometimes people say three, but there's clearly a red back salamander which has a red stripe down its back and a lead back which is more of a gray phase without the red stripe. Okay, so when you've rolled a log over, you want to and you found a salamander, you want to make sure you don't squish the salamander under the log when you put the log back. And you should always put the log back in the location where you found it. So the thing to do, I have a red back salamander in my hand here, you roll the log back into position and then you allow the salamander to find its own way back under the log. And that way he doesn't get squished when you roll the log over on him. You know, sometimes you can even find redback salamanders under objects in your own backyard. I have this piece of wood that's been sitting in my yard for a while, and I'm going to flip it up and see if we have any. And yes, we do. We have three redback salamanders under here. Four, five. Actually, there's quite a few here. So sometimes if you want to observe a salamander, you can stick them inside a Ziploc bag like this and it gives you a chance to observe them up close and personal. What you might want to do is put a little bit of water in there with a, a mister or just some um, water that you have available to keep them moist. So I have in this bag one of the redback salamanders that I was able to capture and I want to demonstrate for you uh, a measurement that is very important when we're working with amphibians and reptiles and that is how to make a length measurement. Now on salamanders in particular we have to be careful when we're measuring the length because the tails of these salamanders will break off um, and then they'll regenerate a new tail but it's usually not the same length as the original tail. So with amphibians like this redback salamander we generally make two measurements. We make a measurement of the entire length of the salamander we can do this easily or facilitate it easily by putting it inside of a Ziploc bag and then uh, just getting it to straighten out as much as possible. And in this case, you'll notice that the total length of this salamander is about 8.1 centimeters. But we also make a second measurement and that's because salamanders can lose their tails and so we're measuring really the body length and we call that the snout to vent length and that is measured from the tip of the snout to the cloaca which is roughly uh, in between the two hind legs. So in this case you can see that the snout to vent length is about 3.5 centimeters and that's the kind of measurements we would typically make for length on an adult salamander. Bye Salamander, we'll see you next time.